In this Splendor video, I'll be demonstrating how to render an animation, and I'll be discussing the difference between rendering as a single movie file versus rendering each frame as an individual image. Then I'll demonstrate how to use the new movie format interface introduced in Blender version 2.79. And I'll also demonstrate how to convert an animation that was rendered as individual images into a single movie file. Changes were made to Blender in version 2.79 that affect how the interface is used for rendering animations. Therefore, if you're using a Blender version older than 2.79, some of the things shown in this video will be different. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.79b. This is an animation project that is ready to be rendered. In case you're interested in making this particular animation, you can find a link to a tutorial in the video description. When you're done with your project and you're ready to render the animation, switch to the Render panel. This is where you can set the resolution that your animation will be rendered at. This value lets you select a percentage of the resolution shown here. I'm going to keep these default values. These are the start and end frame values for the animation. These are the same values that are shown down here. You can also change the frame rates here. Next, we're going to set the directory where the rendered animation will be saved. We do this in the Output section. Click this button to navigate to the directory that you want to use. Then clear any file names that might be here. Now if you click this button, it will create a new directory. I'm going to click it and create a directory named Wash. Then I'll select the new directory and click Accept. You can see the directory name here. For this next step, we need to decide whether we're going to be rendering a single movie file or whether we're going to render each frame as an individual image. Click this button to set the file format. You can choose a movie format or an image format. If you choose a movie format, then your animation will be rendered as a single movie file. If you choose an image format, then each frame will be rendered as an individual image. In our case, the animation has 170 frames, so we would end up with 170 images. Rendering as individual images has some advantages. One big advantage is that you can stop the rendering process before it's done and then restart it again where you left off. I'll be demonstrating this a little later. Also, if Blender or your computer crashes during the rendering process, then you can restart it where you left off. Then after rendering the individual images, you can use Blender's video sequence editor to convert the images into a single movie file, and this conversion is quick. So if you want to convert the images into more than one movie file format, then this is a good way to do it. Also, by rendering frames as individual images, you could do some post-processing on the images before converting them into a single movie file. A disadvantage with rendering as individual images is that it takes a little extra work to convert it to a single movie file format. So if I'm rendering an animation that doesn't take too much time to render, then I'll typically render it as a single movie file. However, if I expect it to take longer than about an hour to render, then I'll consider rendering it as individual images. I'll be demonstrating both methods, and I'll start with the single movie file method. The available movie file formats are listed here on the right. If you select the FFmpeg video format, then an encoding section will be available where you can select more options. Here you can select a container for your video and a codec. So what's a container and a codec? Let me start with a codec. Your animation is made up of a bunch of images. A codec encodes and typically compresses these images into a format that can be stored or transmitted to another computer. If our project had audio, which it does not, then an audio codec would be also used to encode and compress it. So what is a container? A container contains your video and audio if you have it. Container files have file extensions that you may recognize, like AVI, MP4, or MKV. This is the file that you play with your video player. Blender has some container and codec combinations predefined here, but I'm going to use the default settings. 
After you've selected the container and codec, you can render the animation by clicking the Animation button. Or, from the Render menu, you can select Render Animation. When the animation is done rendering, the movie file will be available in the output directory that you selected. Now let's look at rendering each frame as an individual image. To do this, we'll be selecting one of the image file formats. I'm going to use PNG. Now to render the animation, click the Animation button, or from the Render menu, select Render Animation. I'll let this render for a while, and then I'll stop the rendering process before it's finished, and then show you how to start it again from where we left off. So I'll pause the video until we reach about frame 70. Rendering has reached frame 70, so I'm going to stop the rendering process here. I can do this by clicking the X next to the Render Progress bar. To restart the rendering process where we left off, I'll come over to the Output section and remove the check mark that's next to Overwrite. Now when we restart the rendering process, Blender won't write over the files that we've already rendered. Instead, Blender will start rendering where we left off. So now I'll restart the rendering process again from the Render menu by selecting Render Animation. You can see here that we're now rendering frame 70, which is where we left off. I'll pause the video again until it's done rendering. Rendering is finished and this is the final frame that was rendered. To play the animation, go to the Render menu and select Play Rendered Animation. All of the frames in the animation were rendered as individual images. I'll use Windows File Explorer to look at the images that were saved. Each of these images represent one frame in the animation. Here is frame 75. Now we're going to use Blender's Video Sequence Editor to convert the images into a single movie file. So click this menu and select Video Sequence Editor. Next we'll add the individual images. So press Shift A and select Image. Then navigate to the directory where you saved the animation files. Now press A to select all and then click Add Image Strip. This purple strip represents the images. Next, if the Properties panel is not open, then from the View menu select Properties. Up here we can set the start frame, so set this value to 1. The length of the animation is 170 frames, so verify that the length value is correct. Now we'll set the file format. So go to the Output section. Click here and select a movie format. And just like I showed earlier, if you select the FFmpeg video format, then an encoding section will be available where you can select more options. Here you can select a container for your video and a codec. Or you can use a preset to select a container and codec combination. I'm going to keep the default settings. Now open the Post Processing section. Make sure that there's a check mark next to Sequencer. We're going to be rendering the animation again, and when we do this, if we have a scene strip, which we do, and there's a check mark next to Sequencer, then when we render the animation, Blender will convert this scene strip into the file format that we specified. So I'll start rendering from the Render menu by selecting Render Animation. You can see that the rendering is now very quick because Blender is converting the images into a single movie file. Now I'll use Windows File Explorer and go to the directory where I saved the image files. Here is the movie file that we just created. Now assuming that you have a video player that will play the movie format that you specified, you can play the movie. I've set up this player to repeat the video in a loop so that it will keep playing. So now, let's say that after viewing the finished animation, I decide that I want to make some changes to the project and then render it again. And I don't mean the quick render where I'm converting the image files into a single movie file. I mean the full render that takes a long time. I would start by removing the check mark that's next to Sequencer so that Blender won't use the image strip that I loaded into the video sequence editor. Then I would change the file format back to an individual file format and make sure that there is a check mark next to Overwrite. 
and now I can render the animation again. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.